Okay. Welcome back to Gloomhaven on the PC. We're still in the same scenario here, the Crypt of the Damned. We still have the Red Guard, the tanky boy that he is in his little cute devil outfit. Uh, but instead of the Tinkerer, we have swapped over to the Hatchet. And... Um, so far, I'm fairly pleased. The hatchet is pretty powerful. As you would expect from a character kind of devoted to doing damage. Um, so he's primarily a ranged character. He does have some melee abilities. Uh, like retrieval, that's a melee ability. Uh, um, I thought he had some... Yeah, close cuts is a melee attack against two adjacent targets. Um, he's got a little bit of melee, but most of it is ranged. And the big thing that makes the hatchet unique is the favorite. This is almost always the first card you play. It's an ongoing effect for the whole scenario, unless you cancel it or something. And, um... It makes it so that you have uh, essentially like a buff, the favorite buff. Uh, and you can spend that buff to add plus three attack to a ranged attack to a single target by throwing the favorite. Once you do that, if the target doesn't die, the favorite is kind of like embedded into them. And you can retrieve it in a couple ways. One is you can use the retrieval card, which is a melee attack. And if you use it, you'll take back the favorite. Most of the time, though, it's going to happen when it dies. And it will drop the favorite onto the ground. And then you either have to go stand on it and end your move on it, or use a loot card to pick it up. Um, one of the good ways is with... Uh, well, retrieval, the bottom part of retrieval. You can do a move one, loot one. Um, so, yeah. I mean, this card is designed to get back the favorite. Um, so, yeah. Adding plus three attack to a single target is huge, but there's even more to it than that because you can do, like, follow through, which will add plus two attack and an XP if the target has your favorite. Um, I think there might be, that might actually be it, is follow through, but, um, still, adding the plus three attack, it, it's just, it's big, it's big, it's big time stuff. Uh, most weak, normal enemies can just die in one shot. So, uh, that's been quite appealing, I must say. So, uh, we've actually cleared out most of this scenario. And, yeah, plenty of enemies died in one, one hit. Like the cultists with five health just used the favorite. Boom. Done. Uh, so it's been pretty solid. And... So now we're going to go up against the Earth Demon again, the Elite, the Big Boy. So this is where the big cards... <sighs> Power Pitch is going to come out. Um... Didn't I have another card that was like... Double the damage? Maybe I didn't take that. I guess maybe I didn't take that. But yeah, power pitch with the favorite is a nine attack straight out, straight out the gate, which is, which is pretty substantial. Uh, we do have to burn a card, but the following turn, then you can use follow through, and then that's another attack four, and you know you could use close cuts for an extra attack on that turn. It's it's gonna be good, uh, but we gotta open the door first. So let's do a flame shroud. And, um, I don't know if the rest really matters. Yeah. 
Okay, and we'll do we'll do power pitch for now just to move. Try to get somewhere within range. Sure. All right. Move four onto the door. You buy shit. Yeah, we know about that. We already have gotten the treasure chest when we failed, so that does not uh, that does not replenish. I did get the treasure chest over here. That was some kind of ring. I didn't really get to look at it, but it was some sort of ring. Well, he'll actually be able to shoot me. That's a bummer. Oh, but the disadvantage from his armor. We got the miss. That was pretty nice. So we could just keep walking in and wailing on this dude, but uh, I think probably we want him to try to move out. So we'll use shock in advance and this. I don't have many turns left on the red guard actually, or either of them. We're, we're nearing the end here. This will be a move four, which is pretty good. Do that. Move two. And then attack. He could hit me if I don't move. So we will move. Get push. Consume air. Are you serious? I wasted one. Damn it. That would never happen in the board game. go ahead and long rest we'll go ahead and long rest we should be decent we will get rid of uh blinding sickle and we will go ahead and get rid of retrieval there's no need to retrieve the axe anymore All right, let's do, um, we only need a move two. Let's just do move two and disarm. It's generally a solid choice. For us, um, power pitch would be good. Assuming I have line of sight, but that would be an attack four, range four. I'd have to move three, which means if I want to shoot, do power pitch this turn, I'd have to, I'd have to burn stopping power. <laughs> yeah, no, we won't do that. I don't really have a great turn otherwise, though, so maybe we do. Yeah, I think it will still be fine. We'll be fine. He's going to be practically dead. Three damage, disarmed, good. Gonna do this to move here. Power pitch on this guy, favorite, attack nine. <laughs> What's the miss? Oh my God. Yes, welcome to, um, 
RNGs, I guess. Pretty damn shitty. He has our favorite, so we can do follow through, but holy shit, that's pretty bad. I'll stay right next to him. It'll be fine. All right, so follow through. There we go. Five damage. Uh, that's nothing. Easy. Okay, uh, I think we'll be fine. He's got three health left. Red Guard still has some turns available, but um, the hatchet is done, unfortunately. So let's um, short rest. Meh, that would have been whatever. We'll long rest there. Deck three, immobilize. Come on. Nope, not quite. Yeah. All right, hatchet has exhausted. Short rest. I mean, if we roll a miss here, we actually do fail, which would be pretty embarrassing. Times two, better. All right, well, that was closer than I would like, but yeah, doing an attack nine and, and rolling the miss is a really shameful experience. It's clear that you've disrupted some sort of ritual here. These elemental demons belong on an entirely different plane of existence. But the cultists have somehow managed to pull them through to this one. On the altar in the back room, there is a wealth of scribblings on these rituals. Not all of the writing is intelligible. But you get the sense that this crypt is a place of power once used by an ancient civilization. The ancients tapped the power of the elements to enhance their own lives. And while their exact fate is beyond your knowledge, it clearly didn't end well. Among the scripts, you also find notes on a couple of other places of power in the area. One appears to have seen heavy use with the cult, and the other is marked as being overrun by vicious undead. It looks as though you have the opportunity to either disrupt more of their work, or get in their good graces by helping to clear a threat. And the auto, audio mixing there at the end, not too great. But I didn't complete either perk thing. Which is uh, annoying. Shockingly, the Red Guard did more damage than the Hatchet. Uh, I wouldn't have guessed that, but the Red Guard is solid. It's a solid class. And I have to get more used to the Hatchet. Ruinous Crypt or the Decaying Crypt. Okay, Red Guard is almost level two. Very exciting. Uh okay, he did not get a perk yet. Okay. That is fine. So the merchant now has the Ring of Skulls available for 50 gold. Let's you summon a skeleton once per scenario. It has three health, two move, two attack. I was I've been playing the Bone Shaper in Frosthaven, and uh, they're basically a necromancer, so I'm very accustomed 
to these skeletons. They're nice little tanky boys. Uh, they can do, you know, if you have a multiples of them, they can do some solid damage, but... <sighs> yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be bad to have, but 50 gold is steep. Let's do a city encounter. Welcome to the marvelous and magic Techno Circus. The Quattro with the top hat you met on the road greets you as you enter the circus tent. We always welcome our friends to come and see the wondrous sights. You wander around the pavilion for a while, looking at all signs for a manner of improbable creatures. Ultimately, you have to decide on what to see first. You can go watch the dancing bear or visit the famed fortune teller. Well, we're going to see that dancing bear. That's, that's amazing. You enter a smaller tent off the main one and come face to face with what is indeed a dancing bear. Its handler stands to the side, prodding it on occasion, while the bear stands on its hind two legs and shuffles back and forth. It is amusing until the handler prods the bear one too many times and the bear becomes enraged and attacks. You quickly jump into action and subdue the bear, saving the handler from getting mauled to death. Hmm. Uh, and that's plus one reputation for some reason. Okay. We should have helped the bear maul the handler to death. But, okay. Uh, so that's all well and good. Let's get some more blessings, devotion, all that good stuff, up to 20. Uh, and let's move on. So we still have the Inox encampment, but again, I feel like that's an evil objective, much like uh, the decaying crypt. Destroy the undead that the cultists discovered here. So that would be helping the cultists. I don't think that's what we want to do. We want to stop the cultists. Those bastards. Let's go to the ruinous crypt. And have a road encounter. You're traveling through a small wooded area when you round a bend and find a group of Inox warriors fighting a band of armored humans. With all the commotion, it's hard to discern more details, but the humans look like guards from Gloomhaven. You're not sure why they would be out here fighting the Inox, though. We will help the humans fight off the Inox. With your arrival, the Inox retreat back into the woods, one of them casting hexes as he flees. Blast it all, one of the guards says. Patrol duty is the absolute worst. No matter what we tell those savages, they're convinced we're going to take over their forest. Anyway, thanks for your help. I thought we were done for. Plus one reputation, eh, but we've been cursed, so we'll have an extra curse card in there. Pretty shitty, but reputation is eventually pretty good. Your mission is clear. These elemental cultists are distorting the fabric of the world and must be stopped. With that goal in mind, you follow the writings to an ancient crypt you believe to be the cult's base of operations. Stealing yourselves for combat, you batter through the rotted door and charge into the hall of the crypt. The sight before you is both wondrous and horrifying. A group of cultists is performing ritual incantations in front of a black, gaping hole in reality. They turn toward you and snarl, unsheathing their sacrificial daggers. Behind them, an inky darkness spills from the hole and coalesces into nightmarish forms full of teeth and claws. You know you must send these terrors of the elemental plane back into the void, but you are paralyzed with fear. Okay. I'm sure we're doing the right thing. Uh, masochist, your health at the end of scenario is equal to two or less. That's a little tricky to pull off. Or never end your turn adjacent to any of your allies. More likely to pull off with a ranged guy. Uh, plebeian, never kill an elite monster or boss. Meh. Or gambler, kill a monster with an attack that has disadvantage. Possibly. Basic, I mean, if you use a ranged attack an adjacent monster, it's disadvantage. So it could happen. But with two people, there's actually, there's going to be definitely less elites than normal. Or, you know, there's as few elites as possible with only two characters. So it's possible I'll never actually kill one. Let's go for that. 
I don't want to forcefully go into a disadvantage attack just for a perk point. Alrighty. We have to kill all enemies in all rooms, but we start disarmed because we're so afraid. <sighs> that doesn't really matter for the hatchet because I wasn't planning to make an attack the first round. But yeah, for the uh, red guard, that's a little shitty. So the hatchet's going to be using the favorite, of course. And then... Doesn't really matter at all. We probably are going to follow up with Disorienting Barrage because it's target three. We have Night Demons here as a new enemy. These have five health, three move, three attack. So they're fairly beefy. And all attacks against them have disadvantage. Oh, well then that other one would have been pretty easy. Uh, I could do follow through, move to push two, and I could push this demon into these traps. That's pretty solid. Let's do that. The red guard, he does not have the luxury of pushing. Um, he has pulls, but those are related to attacking, so he can't do that. Um, probably like all attacks targeting you gain disadvantage this round would be pretty solid. Or putting on Flame Shroud. The problem with putting on Flame Shroud, that top part where if an enemy enters it next to you, they take two damage. I have to burn that card then. And then I never get that bottom move four and the initiative six again for the rest of the scenario. That's really painful. So I don't think I really have any great alternative. I think we'll do Shield of the Desert, but we're not going to actually do anything with it. Uh, just so we can go quickly and get out this disadvantage buff. All right, 1527. Night Demons are going first, which fucks up uh, basically the hatchet's whole turn. <laughs> uh, no, they won't move actually if I get... This guy won't move if I get in there, so let's get in there. And then this, we can't attack, so that's that. Night Demons, two damage. Followed by that. Zero damage, followed by one. Yeah. Their allies would have suffered one as well, but did not work out that way. All right, so the favorite, of course, get that ready to go. Then we're going to move here. Push this guy into this trap. No? Oh, it has to be pushed to. Yeah. I mean, it would be nice to drag him through both traps, but that's impossible. There you go. Look at that. Down to two health. Cultists are going. Doing a little attack there. All right, he's at five health already. Not too great, and we don't have our heal on hand, unfortunately. So let's uh, do some stabby stabs. Maybe the top of twirling stabs, but I guess we could do this just for an extra shield. Hatchet is going to be doing Disorienting Barrage. That will be able to hit three things pretty heftily. For a bottom action... Uh, I could move and push that two health demon into the other trap. I actually like that quite a bit. 4163. Cultists are going to be summoning living bones, so ideally we'd kill both of them. 
Let's see what happens. Oh, he drew the crit and the miss, but he had disadvantage. It sucks. All right, now we're shield. Hatchet. Uh, um. Yeah. Let's move here. Push this guy straight into that trap. What? What? What happened there? I pushed him too. Oh, God. We're not going to kill both cultists. That's for damn sure. All right. Let's target these three. The favorite. Do we want to kill the night demon? He's doing attack four. So, yeah. Let's try and make sure he dies. Nothing. Nothing. Dead. Yikes. Getting a little dicey here. I'm do the heal two, range two on myself. And then... Oh, God. Do close cuts. I don't have a whole lot of... Oh, care package, I could heal him as well. Okay. I could see this working, depending on initiatives. Bullshit, Living Bones goes... F okay, good. <laughs> good. All right, so we're going to heal myself. Um... Yeah, that's going to be painful. That's going to be the most painful. We really want to kill these night demons. Damn it. There went the bless. Okay, we're going to attack two here. Dead. And I'm going to move two to get my favorite again. Then we're going to shoot this guy and hopefully he'll... Man, that disadvantage on all attacks. It's really shitty. Good. Good. Attack zero is pretty bad. Nice. Here's the real problem. Shit. Shit. Yikes. Uh, well, that's certainly all our heals. We definitely want to do all adjacent enemies suffering one damage. Because then I don't have to worry about the night demon anymore. But, uh, I don't really have any great alternatives, and... I sense problems. This isn't going to be good. This isn't going to be good, man.
Okay, the living bones are shielding and healing. Um, the cultist is doing an attack zero, so it is possible that this could work out. Oh, I forgot about my potion. Okay, that'll save me. We're okay. Let's attack this cultist. Minus one, because why would I ever kill anything? Plus one, of course. Living bones, shield, and heal. Back to full. It's annoying stuff, but there you have it. And uh, I'm gonna move not through the trap, because that would be dumb. I'm just gonna do a melee attack here. Good enough. Oh, the fucking explosion. Man, I'm dumb. I completely forgot about that. Great. We're fucked. Okay, good. Sort of good. <laughs> sort of good. I mean, maybe I should be burning. Uh, no, it wouldn't have. Uh, good thing I didn't burn it. All right. Um, I can't. I can't avoid. I can't avoid. If I pull him into the trap, but I can't. I'd have to move three. I can't do that. So my best bet is just. Giving them a damage and disarming one of them. Still is not going to be good. Yep, that's two discarded cards getting burned. Very poor showing here. Very poor. Uh, I'm going to burn... Shield of the Desert and Blinding Sickle. Sure. Okay. Now we do a long rest. Long rest. Maybe they'll heal. Oh, God. It's their biggest attack. This is so bad. I might start over. This is... Yeah. I mean... Yeah. Having to burn that many cards... Uh, uh, this was worst case scenario because uh, yeah i mean it's done it's done so that's how poorly that can go no not restart round abandoned scenario yes thank you retry so that went very poorly very very poorly Starting disarmed kind of shit. Um, but yeah, wading into trouble like that was not good either. Uh, if I just had a push. If it generates a light, I could push, but I don't really... Okay, shock in advance will be good. But I... If I go late, I could heal any damage. But the, the whole idea of these traps is that I can push them. Or if the night demons move in, I can't push them into the traps. So that's why we want to. I don't think burning healing or losing healing sands in right away is good for the disadvantage. I think swift strength's better for a shield. And then the top part, um, I could do shield spikes 
which would give me retaliate one. For the whole scenario? Is that how I'm reading this? Hold on. Uh, yeah, okay, it lasts, uh, the whole scenario. I've been sleeping on Shield Spike, I think. I think it would be a lot better if I had, like, I don't know, some way to generate another shield. But perhaps down the line, it would be better. Okay, that's a really solid opener that I have never considered until now great uh, cultists go first it's not a problem night demon move to attack four Move two. If I go here, the other one won't be able to get me, but I also won't be able to push. If I go here, the other one won't be able to get me, but it'll be able to get the drifter, so that's bad. If I go here... Now, if I go here, the drifter can still get in there to push. It puts him in kind of a bad position, but sure. Okay, now retaliate. Okay, cool. Favorite. Oh, no, because I'm going before the Night Demon. So, do I eat the attack four, is the question. Just to push this thing right now into a trap. Or I push the Cultist in. No, the Night Demons are worse. Alright, fine. It's not horrible. That's nice. And he takes the damage. Retaliate. Yeah. All right. I'm an idiot. It's always a great feeling when you realize how much of an idiot you are. All right. If we could do... I don't have a jump anymore. So that's a problem. I guess ideally the hatchet would go first and move out of the way so that I could walk in and do twirling stab. That would be best case. But I wouldn't want him to go too late. So let's see, 18. I can do close cuts right here. It's not a bad option. Or we do disorient and barrage. Which is probably the better option. So we need to go after 18. That pretty much leaves this, which is very late. Perfect. Perfect stuff. And we still don't have any living bones. We're going much better this time. So we're going to move uh, here.
Then we're gonna do disorienting barrage. We're gonna use the favorite on this night demon. Oh, beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> See, there's the hatchet. There's the hatchet at work. That's what we're looking for. I'm gonna waltz right in here, skip the rest of the movement. We get disadvantage against us, and we still have retaliate. And we're gonna do twirling stab. Come on now. Ah, oh, okay. It's fine. Beautiful miss. Heal one. Now, how come there was no retaliate? Oh, because it's always based on your current shield value. Uh, we need to somehow get very constant shield then, if we want to rely on that. But that makes Shield of the Desert far better. Like, holy shit, is that better? That's retaliate three and shield three for the whole round. A lot better. Okay, um, let's do Shield of the Desert, but the top part, and I don't know, Blinding Sickle. Uh, we want to do Retrieval to get our favorite back, and we'll do Stopping Power, I guess. Hmm. Yes, it'd be nice if they die. Let's do an attack three here. Wait a minute, range two. No. Let's be a little smarter. There you go, that's dead. And do this. Fortunately, he doesn't pick up the favorite. Leaves that for us. New move, loot. And now, I don't think I need to do the favorite. <laughs> um, probably not, but if I get a minus one, he doesn't die and he summons a living bone. So let, why fuck around? There you go, dead. Okay, good. So, I'm just thinking about this door. I've got two traps in front of it. If I can jump, that is a perfect scenario of popping open the door and then jumping back behind the traps. The only issue is to do that, I'm gonna have to burn a card of some kind. I don't really wanna burn stopping power. So it would have to be Desert Knight. It would be one, two, three, four, five, six. It would be perfect to do right now. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Sure. Because uh, we're pretty much just moving to and picking up the favorite. do care package to heal myself I guess okay care package move here uh, heal myself for one this doesn't matter done looted then we are moving open door Oh shit. We've got flame demons. These are also flying like the wind demons. 
They have shield three, which uh, is pretty bad, except for the hatchet having the piercing bow that goes through shields. And they only have two health, but they are ranged enemies. Yeah, I mean, they're not great customers. We also have the uh, stuff like Flaming Sickle to do one damage, and Retaliate can go through shields as well. So we have quite a few options to get through them. Um, move to range two. Okay. The only problem is they're going to ignore the traps completely. But this Living Bone Elite will not ignore the traps. So we're going to wait for him to come all the way in. So let's bounce back. Okay. The flame demons are never going to come. They're never going to enter a hex adjacent to me by choice. It's never going to happen. Um, but the retaliate bottom portion, we could work with that. So we'll do flame shroud for the bottom. Shock in advance. For nothing, basically. Uh, hatchet. We don't really have any ideal choices here. Flame demons aren't even moving, which is kind of a problem. Living Bones Elite is moving four. He will actually step on the trap. He'll take three damage from that. Yeah, I think it just is. It just is what it is. Oh, he didn't. Oh, this is an uh, this is difficult terrain. Uh, it's a lot harder to notice on here. If I didn't know what I was looking at. Okay, well then it's all a moot point. Um, I don't really want to burn power pitch. I could open up another door, but we should probably deal with what we have here. I guess just let's both long rests. Okay. Ow. Oh, that was painful. Fortunately, we do heal. We'll get rid of... Um, Flaming Sigil has a nice pull that we could just kill this thing with. So let's get rid of... Um, man, I really value shield now. Blinding Sickle. Hatchet. Let's get rid of... Um... Close cuts. Okay, so we want to do Flaming Sickle for the pull. Because uh, that will just kill the skeleton, as far as I can tell. Unless he goes first and heals, but that will never happen. We'll just use... Shock in advance. Flaming sickle. This guy, however, we need to we need to lay on the pain a little bit on these flame demons. 
I think probably disorienting barrage because we'll be able to ignore both shields. It's my only multi-target range right now. So that'll be that and uh, we'll do second wind. Yeah, unfortunately I can't hit both of them from where I'm standing. Actually, hmm. Is this a movable? Well, it doesn't matter though. Where the fuck am I gonna stand and not get disadvantage? Oh, here. Yeah, okay. So the second wind and disorienting barrage. Oh, god damn it. There's still a hope. There's still. I mean, it's pretty slim. It's a pretty slim hope. I have to get plus zero. No, I have to get plus one. Times two. I'll take that. Dead. And the hatchet will certainly take that gold. All right, so we're doing this, this, piercing bow. And the favorite, just to guarantee we kill one of them. Dead. Almost dead. Muddled, at least. And some gold. All right. Good enough. Okay, uh, treasure chest here. We want that. Uh, I think the Red Guard has more movement in general. He's got to move four. Uh, or we can do this and bank on the retaliation, and then I can heal myself for four with healing sand. Guess that's probably fine for now. Whereas the... We're going to do retrieval... And then stopping power just in case something bad goes wrong. Yeah, center mass. Hmm. Okay, he doesn't have the fire element, so that's good. Yeah, this will be fine. Oh, but if he goes there, then we can't do retrieval. God damn it. All right, then we're just going to hope we kill him. <laughs> Miss out on the... Uh... Yeah, the, uh, the heal. We're doing this. Retrieval. Ram. I really don't want to use the favorite here because I don't want to have to pick it up again. Come on, just give me a plus one. God damn it. Oh, God. I'm trying to be really frugal and lazy. <laughs> All right, take the damage. We're gonna do shield of the desert. Come on, plus one. Oh my God. Well, I don't care. I'm moving on this. I'm moving over here. Getting out of here. I'll use the potion. Get rid of the wound. Make the damage. Now, seriously, though, I mean, plus one. It has to happen. There it is. Good. 
And then I can move this way and heal myself, get rid of the wound. Okay, back on track. Let's long rest here. Uh, do this. We'll end on that gold. I always like gold. Skip attack. Done. Long rest. We'll get rid of... Oh, gosh. It's getting a little tricky. These are all pretty solid cards. I guess Flaming Sickle. But that's a loot card. So I either have to end my turn on this chest and then start moving again next time, or I can do the loot and start one step closer. I guess it's kind of a moot point. Yeah, sure. God. Okay, so... It doesn't really matter, but we want to save all our big move cards. So do these two. And you, long rest. You're going to move on to the treasure chest, which hopefully is something really good and not a trap. God help you if it's a trap. Oh, 15 gold. That's pretty good. I think we can be pleased with that. Uh, we're gonna burn um, Ice stopping power ah, care package We're pretty good on heals at the moment Hopefully I never regret that Yeah, okay uh, let's get in there and mm, do something cool. Let's do power pitch to generate an air. And follow through is, you know, it has range four. We'll do center mass and hope I can hit something. All right. Hello. We have frost demons. They have innate retaliate one. Six health, two movement, three attack. They're big lumbering brutes with retaliate. And we have another living bone elite. Okay. So I have range three. If I don't move, I can hit this one right here. That's ideal because they won't be able to touch me. Let's do it. And we're going to favorite it up right away. Well, minus two is pretty shitty, but there you have it. Okay. Shock in advance, healing sands. Follow through is certainly one of the most logical choices here. Um, we could alternatively bank on retrieval to just get back the favorite right away without having to loot it. In some ways, it appeals to me, I must say. Let's hope for the best. We can tank a hit or two. It's fine. Oh, they're doing ranged attacks. Great. And the Red Guard is very far away. Yeah, action economy, movement economy, big, big part of Gloomhaven. Um, all right. Let's hope I don't roll less than a zero. Good. Got our favorite back, and since we killed him with that hit, we he does not retaliate. That was perfect. Four damage is quite painful. There you have it. We'll long rest again. It's fine. Hatchet can handle himself. Um, 
Let's do stopping power for sure. Chances are that'll just kill him. And then disorienting barrage just for a little movement. Okay, living bone elite is still fucking around. There's another treasure chest here. We could really, we could really live it up. Oh, beautiful. You'll love to see it. I'm going to just put gun for the treasure chest. I really want it. I really want it. Let's get rid of uh, healing sands. Flame shroud. Keep moving. Keep on moving. You're going to long rest. So I'm going to wait for the living bones to keep getting closer. Yeah, that that's pretty close. That'll do it. Uh, let's get rid of... Honestly, Power Pitch might just kill him outright. So let's get rid of Disorienting Barrage. I don't have the favorite, but that's fine. Um, Yeah, I can't quite hit him. So... Let's do Power Pitch. And second win. And here you go. Plus one, minus one. Oh well. No whammies, no whammies, no whammies. 15 gold as well. All right. It all equaled out then. All right, we're going to short rest. I don't think it matters too much at this point. Um, I don't want him to heal. But we want to use as much burn cards as possible at this point. Let's do shield of the desert. Shock in advance. Um, stopping power. That's really all the burn I've got. Oh, uh, center mass stopping power, I suppose. Mm -hmm. There you go. All right, yeah, we're gonna win. Don't worry. Because even, even if I don't hit him at all. He's going to attack me and take three damage, so he's pretty fucked. Oh no, four damage. Jesus. He's dead. Alright, I can get... I can leave my favorite behind. Get another XP and a little bit more gold. I think that's all pretty solid. Well done on that one. With the cultists and their minions dead, it seems the Dark Rift is now dormant. It's no less disconcerting, however. You toss a rock at it, and the rock disappears into nothingness. You must admit that you wonder whether you could enter the rift yourself, and whether you would survive the trip to wherever the rock ended up. Alternatively, finding some way to close the rift is probably the more prudent decision. There's an Aether Enchanter in Gloomhaven who may know more about this interplanar stuff. She's been known to ask for impossible favors before she helps anyone, though. All right. Oh, I wasn't even keeping track of Recluse. Oh, well. Um... Yeah, that's a bummer. But we there were no elite monsters. Oh, no, there were. Both of the uh, the Living Bones elites were in there. But we managed to not kill either one. Okay. Hatchet killed. 
seven enemies did basically a hatchet did like twice as much damage and killing and somehow did more healing as well the hatchet was really the mvp there but the red guard did get more xp and that probably means he's going to level up six more xp on top of that Uh, uh, the Plane of Elemental Power, or the Frozen Hollow. I don't think I've ever actually done this quest. And we could just go straight to it if we wanted. But I'd rather level up. And spend all this gold... So I think we're going to go back to Gloomhaven. All right. Level up. Each time a mercenary levels up, you choose one of two new, more powerful ability cards. Also unlock a new perk. And uh, I think you get a health increase as well. Um, but yes, as you level up, the enemies get stronger. So the game is always balanced in that way. Uh, for two, I, I don't think the scenarios level up until we hit three, though. I mean, now that text implies that it, they get more powerful right away, but that's not how it works quite. Because it's a rounding thing. All right, so... We have Harvest Sickle or Barbaric Instincts as our two options. Harvest Sickle. Attack for range two, generate earth and light. That's a pretty powerful attack. Non-burn. Uh, the bottom is a burn. Move five, looting each hex you enter with this movement. If we want to do some massive looting... Barbaric Instincts, Shield 1, Pull 1, Range 2. All adjacent enemies suffer 1 damage, generate a fire. I like the shield now. Now that I understand and I have my eyes have been opened, it's pretty good. Also an attack 1 on the bottom with a wound and a 12 initiative. I'm feeling Barbaric Instincts, to be honest. Let's do it. Let me look at... Uh, my other cards here. Warrior of the Sun, shield one, immobilize on all adjacent enemies, generate a light. Attack two on the bottom. Blade Dance is an attack, range three. Move two, attack one, range three. Hmm. Move two on the tops, nice. Bottom, move four, jump. Mm -hmm. Precision Strike, move two, pull two. It's hard to say. Do we want Warrior of the Sun for more shielding? What would I get rid of? Possibly Blinding Sickle. I, I don't tend to actually use this card that much. So let's swap that for Warrior of the Sun. If we're just going to be the big tanky boy. But then I don't know what to drop for Barbaric Instincts. Maybe Desert Knight... The disarm can be really good. And the move six jump, I, I tend to actually find uses for. So I don't know. Maybe we drop Warrior of the Sun for Barbaric Instincts. Since they're both shield one on the top. And Barbaric Instincts is better. All right. They seem very similar, so we'll do that. We also get a perk point. A perk, I mean, so... 
is generally always modify your attack modifier deck. So Dust would remove four plus zero cards. Right now, that would be a bad decision. Plus zero is, is solid for us. It's very reliable. Uh, consistency would remove two minus one cards. That's pretty good. Refine, however, removes one minus two card and one plus one card. Getting rid of the minus two is nice, but losing a plus one in the process, not so nice. Then there's some more interesting cards specific to like the class. So Flare would remove a plus one and replace it with a plus two that adds a fire element. Illuminated Light, Blazing Light adds a plus one that makes fire and light. Bulwark adds plus one shield to yourself whenever you draw it. Plus one and a shield for that round. That's kind of interesting. Uh, Extreme Fortitude, ignore negative item effects and add two plus one cards. That's really good for us though, because generally the tanky armor adds negative cards to your deck. So we want to do that. Uh, leather armor is actually fairly unique in that it doesn't. <laughs> Uh, and it's kind of good. It's kind of good, but I want to look back in the merch and see if we can find something better Chain armor sh gain shield one for the rest of the round We could take hide armor instead um, As normally hide armor adds two negative one cards, but we would ignore that it's a lot cheaper than the chain armor. Um, and the chain armor is only better if I got attacked more than twice in a round. Which does happen, but, you know, it's kind of negligible. Whereas I can also buy the heater shield. We could really add on the shielding. I think it's good. With uh, Now that I've... yeah. Man, I was an idiot. There's going to be comments, aren't there? All right, so let's grab the hide armor. You can see we have a discount. Normally, this is 10. Now it's at 9 because of our reputation. We're going to buy the heater shield. Um, do I have any boots? I don't. So we probably want to buy... Uh, well, we're going to sell the leather armor. We can either add two move to a single movement or jump to a single movement. I don't know. I have a lot of like three and four movement. Whereas I do not have that much jump. So let's grab the jump. All right, so we got hide armor. Iron Helmet, Hide Armor, Heater Shield, Wing Shoes, Decked Out. Yep, and we don't have to worry about the negative. Very nice. For the Hatchet, uh, all we have right now is the Bow, so we want to grab Eagle Eye Goggles for certain. Because doing, like, Disorienting Barrage against Shielded Targets with Piercing Bow and Goggles... That's just dead. That's dead city. Um, beyond that, we could buy a potion. Um, probably the power potion, just to make that even more deadly. Okay, good. Decked out. I don't even have enough gold to donate. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Maybe the city encounter will get us something. A great revelry is underway at the new market when you arrive to purchase supplies. Investigating further, you discover the town is in the midst of a pie-eating contest. A group of large sailors sit triumphantly at a long table on a makeshift stage, crumbs and bits of fruit scattered all around. A man in the center stands and addresses the crowd. Can no one best our pie-eating prowess? Step up and test your mettle. With nothing better to do, you head up to the stage. 
The contest goes well for a while as you match the others pie for pie, but soon your eating starts to slow and the sailors are still going strong. I believe if we admit defeat, we lose a reputation. I think. So let's power through the pain. We might get some gold. There you go. Uh, you emit a primal yell and continue eating. Pie after pie, your willpower cannot be broken, and eventually the sailors are forced to concede. However, you cannot even stand to shake your foe's hands. Your legs are boneless, and your stomach feels worse than it has ever felt before. You have earned glory and prize money, but all you want to do is lie down and wait for the horror to pass. So we each lost a perk point, which is not great. That's pretty bad. Uh, Ten gold each and another reputation. So we have enough gold to donate. Uh, I'm going to have both of us donate. I don't know why I'm in such a rush to unlock this class, because the Red Guard seems really nice. I'm digging them. But, um, yeah, so I think next time we're going to do the Plane of Elemental Power, just because I'm not too familiar with it. Whereas I, I pretty much always do Frozen Hollow. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes. But for now, my name is Meng. Game watching has been Gloomhaven. I'll see you fine folks in the next part.